You're listening to The Kelly Track Show. I'm your host, Kelly Track, author, coach, and eternal optimist. Each week, I'll give you lessons to elevate your life, reclaim your personal power, and truly awaken and transform. Your best life starts right now. All right, my friends, welcome back to the show. Thank you as always for tuning in and for listening. I so appreciate you. It is a beautiful fall October day in Vancouver, Canada. It's so sunny, you guys. I'm going to record this and I'm going to go for a walk on the seawall. One of my fave things to do is listen to podcasts on the seawall. Oh my God. Shout out to all the listeners who love to listen and walk at the same time. Especially if you're an audio learner, it's like the best thing ever. (laughs) So this episode is super special. It is another one in the series of KT Q&A, and it's where I have guests ask me questions on this show, which is really fun because, you know, you get a little bit of a different interview. You get to know a little bit more about me and how I think and my routines and rituals. So today it's such a treat because I have my friend Dominique on the podcast, and she is so incredible. So my friend Dominique Huang, who is interviewing me today, is a current student at Wellesley College in the U.S., and together we met a couple summers ago at Draper University. We talk about this in this episode today, and Draper University is an entrepreneurship school and residency program for young global change makers, aka young people who have startup ideas who want to change the world. So it's run by Tim Draper, who is a venture capitalist and a billionaire, legit billionaire. (laughs) And you get all sorts of really sweet speakers, teachers, facilitators who are, you know, leaders in the tech space who have amazing companies of their own, like It was such an honor to be there for a while. And I remember meeting Dominique and we had this one interaction by the pool because when you stay at there, you get access to the pool as well. It's a really nice setup and you have a really beautiful little mini campus. So we were chilling poolside. And I remember this one conversation where I remember thinking, oh my God, this chick is going to be my friend forever because I felt so connected to her. And you know, when you meet those soul sisters out there, Dom is definitely one of those for me. And we were talking about life and the meaning of life and what we wanted for our life, not just, you know, startups and what we're working on at the time and what our plans were and, you know, the everyday stuff that people are talking about. Dom wanted to ask the deeper, harder, more meaningful questions. And I remember thinking, oh yeah, this is my kind of person. And you know, when one seeker meets another seeker, you just hit it off right away. So I really hope you enjoy this episode. Dom asks amazing questions like top notch. Somebody get this girl a podcast stat. (laughs) Okay. But anywho, I want to also say thank you so much for subscribing to the show, for rating it and reviewing it. I really appreciate that. Part of having a really great podcast means you guys sharing it. And thank you so much to you guys who seriously share it every single week on your Instagram stories. And for those of you who don't know, I'm offering a giveaway right now. And your chances of winning are very high (laughs) because not that many people have entered yet. So defs get in on this ASAP. If you want to pause this episode and go over to the Apple Podcasts app, just that little purple thing that you're probably listening from, the purple app, and you go over to the Kelly Track Show and you scroll on down to write a review and you leave a rating and review and add your Instagram handle, then I'll notify you if you win the grand prize of both of my courses, meaning free enrollment in your conscious empire and your best life. Now, I also want to take a second to give a shout out to the review of week. So this one comes from Lucy Jane Gregg, and she writes five stars. I've only listened to a few episodes since you had J Rob on. That's short for Jess Robson. I will link her in the show notes. That was a really great episode. But I am in love. Kelly speaks in a calm, centered way that is so real and honest and encouraging. I listen when I need to get into alignment, need some extra confidence, or just want to have like-minded people talking in my ears. Thank you so much. I so appreciate that. It's honestly such an, an honor to have you here in my community, Lucy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you want to be the review of the week, just be sure to submit your rating and review of the show over on Apple Podcasts and leave your Instagram handle. I also want to take a second to give some shout outs to some of my students in my courses right now. So I want to give a shout out to Dory from the US who just enrolled in Your Conscious Empire. I want to give Mandy a shout out for enrolling in Your Best Life from Canada. Eugene from Romania for enrolling in Your Best Life and Your Conscious Empire. Shout out to you, Eugene. You are my very first student in Romania. Congratulations. 
and Sam for enrolling in both Your Best Life and Your Conscious Empire from Canada. I so appreciate you guys all being here. Thank you so much for being students and sending in such kind words about the course. It really makes me glow when I see how happy you guys are to love the material. That makes my heart sing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And last but not least, support for this episode comes from my friends at Four Sigmatic. So I love Four Sigmatic. I am obsessed with their mushroom matcha. You know I drink this stuff like crazy as iced tea. What I love most about Four Sigmatic is that all their products are USDA organic, which is very important to me and in line with my own values. When sweetened, it's sweetened with organic stevia, which is also super important to me because I don't want sugar in my products. And I love that everything has really well-sourced and properly sourced adaptogenic mushrooms. I'm pretty big into the adaptogenic mushroom game right now. I didn't really know about it until Four Sigmatic rolled into my life. And it's been really nice to bump up my own energy with mushrooms. I never thought I would say that in my entire life. (laughs) Growing up, I wasn't always a big fan of mushrooms and people are always like, does this stuff taste like mushrooms? No, (laughs) it doesn't taste like mushrooms. It tastes delicious. And I just love to have my mushroom matcha, which is my fave drink right now with ice in a really cute mason jar and cold water. And I have a really cute little straw, reusable straw that I use. And I love to just sip on that on my coaching calls. It is the best. If you ever see me on a coaching call, we usually chat Skype audio, but if we chat Skype video and you see me drinking something green, you're like, yup, she is on that mushroom matcha again. All right, friends, if you want to give Four Sigmatic a try, all you have to do is use the promo code Kelly Track, which is all one word, at checkout for 15% off your order anytime you can use the code as many times as you want. And whatever purchase order basket size you have, the code will work. So if it's your first time, if it's your hundredth time, if you're spending a buck, if you're spending a hundred bucks, it will work, which is what I love. I love when codes just work no matter what the price is in your shopping basket. All right, my friends, that is what I want to share with you. And let's get into today's amazing and juicy episode. All right. Well, welcome to the show, Dom. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for coming on. No, thank you. Of course. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's it's honestly such a pleasure. So I would love to start by talking a bit about who you are, what you're up to, and how we met. So I'm Dominique. I am a current student at Wellesley College, and I met Kelly two years ago. Yeah, and we met through Draper University, which was such an experience in a nutshell. But I remember meeting you and it was like, sometimes I feel like you just have these connections with people. And I'm like, okay, this girl, she's like, she's one of my people. (laughs) I remember having that feeling of like, okay, I know that like, I know she gets it. Like I I can trust her. I could talk to her about the stuff. And you were, you always ask the best questions. Like they always say, you can tell how smart someone is by the questions they ask. And I was always so blown away by the questions you ask. I was like, whoa, way to ask the most profound, deep questions. And then, yeah, you blew me away from the moment I I met you. And I only knew you and Alex really from that program. And I just feel like your wisdom had always shone through. And I I could feel that you, I feel like depending on if you believe in past lives, I was like, I I feel like this girl's been here many times on earth. She's very wise. She has lots of answers. And I was like, this girl, she's the real deal. Oh, thank you so much, Kelly. That was so nice. Oh, that's true. I mean it. I mean it. Yeah, that was a, yeah, I really loved meeting you that summer. I think the first memory I had was, it was you, me and someone else and we were talking and you were saying how you, ever since you were born, you always felt like you had a fire in your stomach and you had all of this energy. And I heard that and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so cool. (laughs) Yeah, you were yeah. telling me about that um, when we were sitting outside in the marina in the summer here in Vancouver. And I remember you bringing that up. And I remember thinking, oh, my God, I don't even remember talking about that. But yeah. Yeah. No, it was a great memory. And yeah, we had so many great times back at Draper. Yeah, totally. Such an experience. Such an experience. And for the listeners who don't know what that is, it is an entrepreneurship school where Tim Draper and their team kind of hand select young entrepreneurs who want to do cool things. And you do like a residency in Silicon Valley where you learn from 
super legit people in tech and work on your cool stuff and meet really cool people and have a good time, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So you love self-development and you've been into this stuff for a while. So I'm super curious. How did you get into it? Oh, that's a great question. I don't know. Ever since I was like a kid, I was always drawn to the the nonfiction section of the library. <laughs> and I always really liked those books, like self-help books. And then I think for me, I've always worked on continuously improving my life. I think realizing like, I don't want to live my life on autopilot and always working to live a more aligned life. I think that's, yeah, that's kind of what drew me into self-development. I love that. And I still resonate with you. I was never a person that wanted to read stories. I never was interested in that because I remember thinking like, but it's fake. I mean, not like, not that it's bad, but I remember being young. I don't know. I must've thought they were real at some point, but when I learned it was fake, it like really bummed me out. I was like, oh, dang. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I totally agree. So what were some of your favorite sort of books growing up or like books that have really impacted you, whether they're like more spiritual or self-development or self-help? Ooh, one that, oh, it was actually um, Robin from Draper <laughs> recommended is called A New Earth. And that one I haven't finished yet, but that was my first intro into spirituality. And that's kind of shifted almost everything in my life for me. And then the other one would be this book called Madly in Love with Me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was a book I heard about a year ago, and it's on self-love. And that was also just such a new concept for me. But now I work to integrate all of these things into my life and using self-love to kind of like lead how I, I live my life. Oh, I love that. I actually want to read that book because you brought it up. I, I feel like you brought that up like about a year ago and I've recently been realizing, I'm like, oh yeah, self-love. I got to work on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a big one. Totally. So how do you integrate it into your life? I'm so curious. So that book is really great. It breaks down self-love into all of these different aspects because you know, maybe you're very good at being self-aware, but maybe you're not good at a different aspect, or maybe you're good at being honest with yourself, but, you know, not good at other aspects. So for me, I think self-honesty was a big one, just especially being in college. I think some of it is such a like, go, 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 you know, get the job, get the, you know, career that everyone's going after. And then being honest with my with myself and being like, wait, I, I don't actually want this, you know, and just because a lot of other students do, or just because it seems like what society is telling me to do doesn't mean it's actually for me. So taking time to check in with myself, be that completely honest with myself and realizing like, wait, it might be scary deviating from this, but it's not for me. Mm. And so I have to do it. I love that. I love that. And I remember when you brought up that book to me for the first time, you were like, I, I remember you saying, yeah, growing up, it was always like self-confidence, self-confidence. And then we're, we're like, oh yeah, we're pretty confident. We're pretty confident. But like self-love is this like whole other dimension. So that's really cool that that book breaks it up into different pieces. And yeah, I feel like you do a really great job of being self-aware because it takes, it takes a lot of guts to have a moment when you're like, okay, everybody around me is doing one thing. Everybody is doing the same thing. And what do I want for my life? And I feel like that's such a powerful question. And not a lot of people stop to even drop in with themselves and have that check-in. So I, I love that you bring that up and that you have that awareness because there's a lot of people that are like 50, 60, 70, and they're still not asking the questions. <laughs> so I love that I love that you have it and that you are so good at dropping in. And I feel like you're super in touch with your intuition as well and sort of listening to that inner voice. Do you feel like that's something that you've worked on as well? That's been something I've been trying to work on. Actually, ever since Draper, <laughs> I used to not really listen to my intuition. It used to be very practical, right? Like mm -hmm. pros and cons and break everything down. And then the first time it was really intuition-based was actually a year ago when I was thinking about taking my gap year. And I, I talked to you about it and you were asking me like, what is your gut telling you? <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's, that's not really how I think, you know, I think in like pros and cons on like a table and everything. But that, that decision for me was really like 
like one that came from my gut or came from my feelings or I don't know what it was, but it wasn't like that same practical way that I usually made decisions. And yeah, ever since then, I've been trying to be a little bit more intuitive with my decisions. Yeah, I love that. Because that was a big choice, like the decision to take a, a gap year and to do something intentionally different from what the rest of the, like the flow of the fish in the sea are doing. So when you had that intuitive moment, how did you know it was the right one? Was it a knowingness? Was it a feeling? I think it was a feeling. I remember I talked to you about it. And then after talking to you, because you didn't tell me what to do, but you kind of guided me to the answer. Yeah, I don't remember, but it was a it was a really good feeling. And I remember thinking about it like if someone had to tell me what to do, I would want them to tell me to take a gap year, right? It's like if someone else had the burden of choosing for me, I would want them to choose this. And then so afterwards I was like, okay, that's that's probably what I should be doing. And yeah, I, I took the leap afterwards. Mm, I love that. Yeah, and I, I like that you brought that up that if somebody asked you, you were hoping that they were like, do the gap year. And one of the questions I ask myself when I'm trying to make tough decisions is like, if I flip a coin and one side's heads and one side's tails, which one do I hope is going to land right side up in the middle of the flip? And I, I still love to go back to that question because it helps me get in touch with my intuition. And I love that you brought up the pros and cons list because I was one of those people that would get a scrap piece of paper and did pros, cons, mm-hmm. like for everything, jobs. Like I remember going to San Francisco, leaving the friends in San Francisco, like staying in relationships, breaking up, like which schools, like pros, cons. And it just, yeah. pros, cons list does not work. I don't care how many TED Talks there are on like <laughs> pros and cons. There was one TED Talk on like how to make decisions. It was like, do a pro, cons list. Which one is longer? And I was like, that's not the right answer. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. It's not that easy. Um, yeah. And it had like so many views. And I just, yeah, I just love that you were able to tap into that internal knowingness because that is always such a strong guide. And we get so coached out of it, I feel like growing up and, you know, in school and all that stuff. So yeah, I was so excited to see you take a gap year. And I feel like you really super flourished after. And it's like you stepped into this super powerful version of you. So I was loving it from afar. Oh, thank you so much, Kelly. I actually, I love what you said about the TED Talk because if you think about it, you know, I think if you were choosing between like stable career path and entrepreneurship, at the time it might be like, wow, there's so many cons to choosing entrepreneurship, right? Because, you know, if you're choosing like a traditional career path, there's, you know, stable job stable income, you know, everything's more stable. That's, that's so many pros, but then like maybe the one pro to entrepreneurship is like, it might be a more aligned life. It might be a more freeing life. Right. Yeah. But maybe that is the right decision, even though that's only like one pro compared to so many pros that you could have gotten from choosing the stable path. Totally. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I feel like anytime I've made a really big decision, it always has looked on paper like I shouldn't have done it. But there was a like tiny voice inside me that was like, mm, this is the right way, even though everybody else is saying, do it the other way. This is the right way. And then lo and behold, it's always the right way. <laughs> it's like we're so smart as humans, but we're also so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. Hey friends, it's me. I just wanted to swing by really quickly in the middle of this juicy episode and let you know that you can snag some of my best top tier business strategies that I use myself in my own business and what I teach in Your Conscious Empire, which is my online class that teaches you how to build a heart-centered business, how to do what you adore, and most importantly, how to free yourself financially. Now, I always get asked the same question, which is this, how exactly I built this business, how I earn a full-time income doing what I love, and how I grew this into a successful and legit thing. Well, in this course, I guide you step-by-step in radical honesty so you can do it too. Your Conscious Empire teaches you everything. It's seriously your roadmap and your best friend. You'll learn everything, like how you master your mindset as an entrepreneur, how you build something with a $0 budget, how you test and validate your ideas before you spend money. This is exactly how you get stuff off the ground. And in addition, you're going to learn how to consciously sell your products and items, market in the heart-centered way, and what it takes to grow your business into a conscious empire of your own. 
Now, what I wanna share with you today is the fact that you can preview a few of these video modules from this exact course and totally experience what my students are loving right now. So hurry on over to the show notes and go preview about an hour of some of my best top tier strategies, ideas, and action items that you can implement right now to start your dream business or take what you got and go to the next level. All right, my friends, back to the show. And I know you also love Tony Robbins. So what's one of the biggest things that he's taught you? Oh my gosh, I do love Tony Robbins so much. Okay, I think there are two things. One thing that I'll always be very grateful for is I kind of got the idea that I should be investing my money and managing my money from him. Like growing up, I never really focused on that or paid attention to that. But I somehow stumbled upon his YouTube videos and I started listening to him talking about his book, Money Master the Mind. And after that one hour, I was like, oh my God, the math makes sense. He's so right. Like I need to be managing my money and not just saving up my money, but investing my money. That was really cool. But I think another lesson that Tony Robbins talks about that I appreciate so much is really that you're not going to live a fully happy life just by doing things for yourself, that to be fully happy, whether it's in your relationship with your significant other or with your friends or with your community is just by giving and not focusing on yourself all the time and giving to your partner, giving to your friends. And I really, really love that message that he shared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, giving. I love that. The power of giving. I feel like I didn't understand the power of giving until later on. I don't know. Some people are really brought up with the power of giving. And I feel like that was something I learned definitely later on. Like I, I don't, were, was, what about you growing up? Were, were you like super, like, you know, give to others, like be super generous. Cause I, I feel like growing up, it was just like, work hard. Be good at school. Do you know what I mean? And it was like, I was so good at that, but I was never ever like, you know, there was no, I mean, I also wasn't like ultra religious. I feel like people who come from more religious backgrounds have such a good way of being really giving and that's ingrained into them. But what about you? Was that something that you learned later in life as well? Yeah, it, it wasn't something I focused on growing up. It was always, I mean, I always wanted to be a good person, but it was similar to you. It was always like work hard, get a good job, you know, get a stable life. Never really that focus on, on giving, but Tony Robbins made it really clear to me. Yeah. So what is something that you're working on right now? Oh, that's a great question. You know how you brought up Lacey Phillips? And I, I remember <laughs> in one of your podcast episodes, yes. you brought up Lacey Phillips. And she teaches a really cool concept of living an unblocked life. Mm -hmm. That's something that's really interesting to me. And it's something that's been on my mind for a couple months now. And it's something I'm trying to work towards. Yeah, I would say that's that's the thing right now. Nice. I love that. And then what's something you're super proud of lately that you've done or accomplished, or you just had a moment of letting like, yeah, I am really awesome. <laughs> I think my first two years of college, I lived in such a like high paced, like frenzy all the time. I was doing so many extracurriculars and just like juggling that and courses and trying to make a lot of friends and go to Boston all the time and just try to do so many things at once. And then, you know, I took my gap year and this year I came back and I'm a lot more calm about everything. And I think the gap year really helped put things in perspective. And also I kind of changed my lifestyle a little bit, but this year I'm a lot happier at school. I'm a lot more calm, which is really nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I feel like that perspective shift is huge whenever we get like a shift in perspective and we're like, wait a second, the way I've been doing it in the past is wrong. I think that's yeah. such a, a beautiful moment. So yes, kudos to you because that's awesome. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Yeah, so those are some of the questions I wanted to ask you. So if you are ready, we can flip the tables and you ask me some questions. And then I also don't know the questions in advance. So they're all brand new to me. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so excited for this part. I've been thinking about these questions for like two or three weeks. I, I, because you asked me so long ago. Yeah, I feel like they're really good. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, so I know we met at Draper. And when we met at Draper, I think you were such a different person back then. And 
I want to know who you were back then and what you were like. And how is that different from who you are now? Oh my gosh. Okay. Amazing question. Remember what I said at the start of the episode, like you can tell how smart somebody is based on the questions they ask. Okay. That's an amazing question. Oh my gosh. So this was like in the peak of my San Francisco time. I feel like I was different in the sense where I really want everybody to see me. And I really wanted people to recognize that I was different. And I don't know if I was doing this intentionally or because I have the viewpoint of now, but I was like, I wanted to be seen so badly, especially from my business school peers. It was like, hey, I'm doing something different with my life. I'm following my dreams. Like I'm different. I'm going to make the next cool thing. When everybody else goes left, I'm going to go right. And I don't know. I feel like I was screaming that indirectly from the mountaintops. And a lot of it was for ego's sake. I didn't really understand the language of what ego meant and that sort of inner critic and doing it for the likes on Instagram versus sort of the awareness I have now. But I feel like back then I did stuff a lot out of ego. I thought I would be a better person if I had an MBA from Stanford. I thought it was like the only right thing to do would be like, oh, of course, be really smart, get seen by a lot of people, you know, start a successful startup, raise money, make the cover of Inc. Magazine. Mm. Like it was very much like, okay, what can I check? Like, I feel like I was a professional box ticker and be like, okay, if I can just, you know, get into Y Combinator, if I can get like a Stanford MBA, if I can raise money, if I can make Inc. Magazine, like just tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. And I feel like it was to sort of prove to other people that I was like different or good. I'm not really sure. But it was such a pivotal, great time in my life because I learned so much, mostly just because it was my, my own, for my own sake of being like, you can go to another city, you can make friends on the spot, you can be smart, you are scrappy enough to start stuff, you can talk to anybody. <laughs> and I feel like the skills I learned there, like I pushed myself so out of my comfort zone. And it was one of the first times in my life where I had really done that. So I feel like it helped me so much and so immensely. And I so appreciate that time in my life of trying to like figure it all out and start stuff and meet people and talk to investors and VCs and be comfortable talking to really important people at big companies and not get weird about it, which has helped me like in many ways now doing this kind of stuff. But yeah, it was very much more of an ego-based life, I'd say. And one where I was still looking for the right for the answers and still wondering like who I was and what I was really good at. So that was definitely where I was then and who I was then. Is that a good answer? (laughs) That was an amazing answer. Oh my gosh. I love that you also mentioned the positives of it because you talk about honoring the process so much. So you're not like, oh, that was a, you know, (laughs) I was pursuing the wrong thing at the time. You, you talk about how it was a part of your journey, which I I love so much. Thank you. I appreciate that. I didn't even realize I did that. So I'm, I'm so glad. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So the next question, I know after you left Draper, you went on to do a series of food-related startups. What I'm curious about is the moment that you were like, oh, yes, kellytrack.com. That's what I should be doing. And that's what I, what I want to focus on. Like, where were you? What were you doing? How did it come to you? Yeah, I remember this point really clearly. And it, I think it was the very first time. So, well, there's been a couple of times in my life when I've really like heard my intuition as like, a voice in my head. And I don't know if that sounds really crazy or weird, but it was just like, I remember being in Canada for the week and I had taken a break and I was at my, at Chris's family's cabin, which is sort of like in the middle of nowhere in, in the woods of British Columbia. And I was working at the time on doing research for that X prize project on the future of food. And I was volunteering my time and putting research into this project because they were trying to win like a hundred million dollar grant, which was huge. And I had never really worked on anything that big before. So I was like, oh, this is super cool. This is the stuff I was interested in. And I remember bringing my laptop and working on that for the X prize and being so resentful about it and like not wanting to do it. And like all the fun was totally gone. It was like the second I left the San Francisco environment, it was sort of like I had the wake up call of, you know, it's sort of when you're out of the environment, you can get real perspective. And I was like, what the hell? Like, 
And then I remember like my intuitive voice being like, what if you just did what you were good at? And I had never done that before in my life, like ever. I had always pushed and chased at things that were challenges, that were difficult. Being really honest, I still do that. I love a good challenge and I love to solve problems and be innovative, but I had never really done what was easy, which is why I always talk now, like in my courses or my coaching or your conscious empire about like the stuff that you are good at is your strength. Stop trying to do other shit. Like (laughs) I was, I think it just went back to me trying to prove myself indirectly to people, but it came across super intuitively. And I remember sitting in, they have like this chair and it's sort of one of those chairs where if you lean back, the footrest pops up. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like a lazy boy thing. Yeah. I was sitting in one of those chairs and I was, it was like, what if you did what you were good at? And it just, I like, it's like I heard it and the sun was shining through like the, the wood planks of the cabin. And oh wow! I remember I was like, wow, what am I really passionate about? And I never really had asked myself that before. And I was like, well, this week I'm having fun, like making my plant-based meals for like Chris and myself and his family. And then I was like, well, what if you just sort of, you know, did what you're good at? And I'm like, oh crap, what am I good at? (laughs) And then I was like, well, I'm good at talking about my health. I could talk about gluten-free stuff. People ask me about this kind of thing, you know, even if it's basic questions like, well, what do you do if you just found out that you're celiac? (laughs) And and it started off there. That was like the first big intuitive aha moment that I needed to do something else. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. I love that story. Thank you. Thank you. I think most importantly, I'm most proud of myself that I had the courage to follow it, even though I remember thinking that I was giving up a lot because I knew I was at this inflection point. This is like kind of what we were saying, like pros and cons list. The final decision to 100% leave San Francisco for good and say goodbye to everything on paper and all my friends, I had so many friends that thought I was nuts. They were like, do it. Like, hello, Kelly, this is it. You're good at this. You would be amazing. It's like, stay in San Francisco. You have a lot of connections that you built up really quickly. Like, even if your startups didn't work out, I could have got a job somewhere else and somewhere cool. And everything in my heart was saying, no, Vancouver, work on tiny, small project, continue seeing Chris. Because if I had stayed in San Francisco, I would have had to break up with him for sure. It wouldn't have worked. Like, long distance doesn't work for us. And it was one of those times when it was like, it looked on paper like I should have stayed in San Francisco and gone for it. And I was like, no. And I'm just super proud that I actually did it no matter what anybody else told me. And I followed my intuition. So yeah. That's such a brave choice. Thank you. I'm so glad you, I'm so glad you chose it. I am too. Yeah. That's a great segue into my next question, which is, so when you first decided to do this, did you have any self-doubt? or insecurities? And if so, how you work through each of them? Ooh, this is a good question. I had a lot of doubt. I don't know. It was sort of interesting. I am a very positive person. I kind of assume a success quite a bit too. Oh man, my ego doesn't like that I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say it. I have always known that I can be successful. And like, I've always had this internal knowingness that I'm going to be successful I think because I've proven it to myself so many times that I can be a a success at whatever I put my mind to. So I was just kind of like, well, I think I can be good at, I'll be good at this. This is going to be success. Even though I had like five Mm -hmm. readers on WordPress, I was like, this is going to be successful. (laughs) I don't know if I was like half delusional or like if the universe was, you know, giving me some sort of like clear cognizance. I'm not sure, maybe a bit of both, but I definitely did have a lot of doubt. Oh my God, so many doubts. Uh, especially around like, is this actually right? Like when the shit gets hard, that's when you question everything. You're like, did I make the right choice? Am I being stupid? Mm -hmm. All my friends have good paying jobs. I'm living at home with my family. I'm trying to make an ebook. Like, am I wasting my time? And I remember having just so many doubts. And I think for me, the biggest part just sort of comes back to the mindset work and going through myself and many beliefs and figuring out what those were and really combing through those with a fine tooth comb and really clearing out every single one, which ended up leading to the course I made called Your Best Life, which has a huge emphasis on like finding and discovering your self-limiting beliefs and then clearing them out and like releasing them. And I feel like so much of what I had to do in the beginning to actually get stuff off the ground, I had to just like 
anytime I hit a wall of I can't do this for X, Y, and Z reason, I was like, why? Let's find the bottom belief. Let's clear this, like mm. get rid of it. But it was mostly like, you know, it's kind of like the stuff of when stuff gets hard, you're like, am I really going to be successful? Am I really going to make money doing this? Are people actually interested? Like, does this have a hope <laughs> or am I just mm -hmm. dreaming? And I had a lot of doubt around myself around that in particular, especially in the beginning when I didn't have a lot of signs of success by any means. And there wasn't like money coming in. And I would see my friends have lives. And at that time, people were like, moving in with their significant other or like getting like a really nice condo or like putting down a down payment even or like getting married and I'm like hey everybody I'm living at home like working on my like <laughs> my blog <laughs> I've got like seven posts and I'm working on an ebook and I don't know that's when the doubt got really real but mm. I don't know I, I think for the most part I usually believe in myself pretty hard. And I, I kind of just go back to that knowingness of, I know I will be successful. It's just a matter of time. I've been successful before. I have a very good track record of success. I know I can do it. I know I can pull off stuff. So I try to always just dabble in that. But the fear and the doubt and the worry, I teach this stuff because it comes up all the time. And I think the biggest one was just the self-doubt when I saw people being successful in the traditional, quote unquote, traditional life path. And I was thinking, oh, shit, did I pick the wrong one? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, fast forward to now. Can you walk us through a day in the life of Kelly Track? Oh, uh, yes, this is a great question. Days are very different. I was talking to my lawyer the other day, who's really awesome. He came on the show. His name is Corey Sterling. I'll put a link in the show notes. But he was asking me how many hours a day I worked. They are extremely different. In peak times, like when I was making Your Conscious Empire, easily working 12 hours a day. And then today, I think the only work, quote unquote, work activity I've done, I checked my email once to see if I got emails from clients. I went on Instagram stories and then I'm talking to you and that's all the work I'm doing. So probably that's, I don't know, like two hours tops today. So it's super different. Wow. It's so, it's, wow. it's super, you know, unique. I won't do a ton of stuff. Like I really try to keep things easy and simple but there's times when I like do a bucket load of work. And if, if I'm making a course, I'm putting in 12 hours a day easy. Not that I like to preach hard work, but that's what it takes when you're making like a top notch course and you're giving it your best. Most days I wake up, I do my best to get into alignment. So I like to just read and relax a little bit in the morning. Usually I have a very... I like to like do stuff and I love to get stuff done. So like usually the first thing I wake up is what's on my to-do list for the day? What's really important? Even though that's probably not the best question, it's always in the back of my head. So getting into alignment, getting into good feeling place, and then just diving right in and doing whatever is most important first. So I talk about my MITs, my most important tasks in your conscious empire. And it's a way in which I get a lot of stuff done because people are always like, how do you get so much stuff done? <laughs> I have lots of secrets on that, that I teach in that course. And I always try to get the important stuff done first. So making a podcast, like doing creative work, getting on like a coaching client call, like prepping for a client call, prepping for an interview with a podcast guest. The most important stuff goes right in the morning, usually before noon. And then noon, I'll like make lunch. I make something, try to make something nice for myself. What did I eat today? Today, oh, I've been, I'm obsessed with tahini right now. So I have like a veggie bowl with quinoa Ooh. and then I made a lemon tahini dip and then with avocado. So I made like just like a vegetable bowl with this lemon tahini sauce. I've been obsessed with that. So I, I made that for lunch. And then usually I'll just do like extra bit of work in the afternoon. I do try to get off my computer. I, if, if I can, I like to be out by 2 p.m. Like I try to stop unless unless I'm working on something that takes more time. But I've been really, really, really cutting back. I feel like... I have like the broken record on this. I am seriously cutting back and trying to pull back and rest more and not work so much because I, I have spent enough time working on stuff where it's at the point where things can kind of function on its own and it can run. And I, I have like so, so much already. So I'm like, I don't need to make another course right now. And like, I don't need to go all out. So I've been dialing it back and just focusing on the stuff that is like the main drivers in my business being the podcast, which is super important, focusing on my clients and 
doing stuff on Instagram. That's, that's pretty much it. And that's where I spent most of my time, everything else, because my business is run off passive income and I do make the most amount of money off of my own courses. Those just run because they're self-study and just people enroll in them when, when, whenever, and whenever it's right for them. So it's really nice to have that be the cornerstone of my business because I don't need to physically do it, if that makes sense, Mm. which is great. So it allows me more time. But yeah, my days are usually, they're usually actually pretty consistent. I was going to say, oh, no, two days are the same. Mm, They're usually pretty similar. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So that's a typical day in terms of work. Mm -hmm. Kelly, I love that so much. Hey there, it's me. I just want to interrupt this amazing episode and remind you that there is a sweet giveaway going on. All you got to do is scroll over on your Apple Podcasts app, click the Kelly Track Show, scroll down to write a review and leave your rave review and Instagram handle so I can find you. And then you will be entered to win both Your Best Life and Your Conscious Empire, which are my two top-notch courses. So when you're done enjoying this episode, be sure to go leave a rating and review and the universe will so give you a cosmic wink and some good karma will flow your way today. And if you need a visual of what I'm talking about, just go to kellytrack.com slash giveaway and it's totally right there for you. All right, peeps, back to the show. One thing I noticed is like, since we met so long ago, but then I've kind of followed your business from like the very initial start and I heal with Kelly Track and then... (laughs) When you started moving to mindset and then I remember the time when you were like, oh, I'm thinking about starting a podcast and, you know, these are the names I have in mind. (laughs) And then now you're like, oh, I think it's time to step back and have more fun, which you've been talking about on the podcast. And every time that we've checked in and like talked about this stuff, I was just like, yes, that makes so much sense. (laughs) Like the first time I saw your website, I was like, Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> this is like so the right direction. And then when you said a podcast, I just remember thinking like, oh yeah, yeah, that's such a good next direction. And now that you say you're trying to, you know, end at 2 p.m., trying to have more fun, it's like that's perfect. <laughs> that's that seems like what you should be doing. Oh, thank you so much, Dom. I so appreciate that. It feels really good to get that external validation because sometimes I'm like, well here goes nothing. (laughs) And it's actually hilarious. The podcast like officially turns one. Like I think it turned one a couple of days ago. I haven't really checked, but I realized I was looking back on my phone and I think like September 10th, 11th or 12th, I started it. I have to pull up the right, correct date on iTunes, but it's officially one years old. And I was like, holy crap. Wow. I've been doing it for a year and time totally flies. And I super appreciate that you shared that every single move that I've done feels like super intentional and on the right path in your eyes. Because yeah, sometimes it's like when you're following your intuition, it's literally like one step in front of the other. Cause like, it's like the universe only gives you one step at a time. And you're like, well, let me pray that this is the right step. <laughs> and I, I sometimes like I have no clue other than the fact that it feels like the right thing. And if it feels good, I essentially do it. And yeah, so thank you. I appreciate that. That's really great confirmation for me. Oh, well, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, next question is, what are your favorite alignment practices? Ooh, I love this. Lately, I've been obsessed with going for a walk on the seawall. I went for two walks already today and I'm going to go out for another one. I don't know what it is. I'm like (laughs) obsessed. I think it's kind of my time when I just get to chill out and it's still sunny right now in Vancouver before we get rain and there's beautiful fall leaves. So I love to go walk the seawall and have a coffee and listen to the podcast and just just tune out. I keep my phone on airplane the whole time. I download all my podcasts. I don't stream them off Wi-Fi. So I like really get intentional about what I want to listen to. That's my favorite way to get into alignment. I love, uh, oh, I'm really obsessed with this show on Netflix. (laughs) Okay. It's called A Taste of the Country. So it's this farm. It's called South Pond Farms. We found it super randomly, but it's this woman. She has a farm. And she hosts events and weddings and it shows the behind the scenes of like making the meals and prepping and doing the, like the table set up and <laughs> getting the wild flowers from the garden and getting the food from the garden to make the meal and her getting the food from her neighbors. And it's a really like rustic, beautiful place. And then I found out that 
this farm. I, I just assumed it was American and it's in Canada, in, in Ontario. And I, now I just got next level obsessed, but I love that show. I think it's my side that loves a little bit more like idyllic, easy life. Oh. But I, I like would totally suck at having like a wedding events business. I am not good at logistics. I hate planning for events. That's like not my zone of genius, but I love watching mm-hmm. her do it because she's, she makes it look super effortless and it inspires me to be all like, you know, Martha Stewart-esque and like make food and bake things. And yeah, I don't know. I'm like obsessed with that show right now. It makes me so happy, even though like they're like 20 minute episodes. I I still am obsessed with those. Wow. Oh, that's so great. That's so fun. Yeah. It's just like good lighthearted TV. I used to, here's the thing. I used to not let myself watch TV and movies. I thought I was too serious for that. I, Chris has Netflix. I don't have Netflix. I don't really, I never really watch TV. I have a a TV in my place, but I don't have cable or any setup. So it just sits there on the wall. But yeah, I never ever watched TV and movies because I thought it was like a waste of time and that I could be like reading a book or something. And I was just like, I had the moment of like, Kelly, you're what the hell? Like, that's so stupid. <laughs> Stop being so serious about everything. Like watch some goddamn TV, like a normal person. Cause I was, I was like, oh, I could be educating myself. Like, like a really type A hardcore overachiever. I could be educating myself. I could be reading a self-development book. I could be rewatching one of my online courses that I've enrolled in. Like, I was like, I don't have time for like TV or Game of Thrones. And then I realized how much joy and pleasure it and how much alignment I got out of watching just fun shows on Netflix. And I was like, wait a second, I have been doing it all wrong. So yeah, note to self, as always, have more fun and don't be so <laughs> don't be so hardcore. Like n- nobody wins when when Kelly Track gets really hardcore about taking life too seriously. That's yeah, I love that. Thank you. Okay. I have two more questions for you. The next one is a fun one. Ooh. So if you had one hour to do anything with Jen Sincero, <laughs> what would you want to do? Oh my god. Oh my god. Um holy crap. One hour. I would want to do something fun that she she likes. Um I know she likes hikes. She likes to go to different cool places and she loves to travel and kind of do like the nomadic lifestyle. I think it would be really fun. I had this vision of us chilling in Barcelona near the beach, <laughs> talking and like some like cute little chairs with some like fun drinks in hand. Mine obviously being non-alcoholic, <laughs> but like us just hanging out for an hour and just, I would probably ask her a lot of questions, but I would just try to play it cool. I don't know if I would be able to play it cool, but just to hang out. I think just hang out and have fun and be in her presence. I think that's all I could really ask for. And then somehow Barcelona came to mind. So there we go. <laughs> By the beach. Yeah. 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 That's a great one. Thank you. That's a great question. I I wonder if I will ever manifest it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, you already met her and I thought you made such a good impression with her. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yes, for the listeners. So Dom was there when I met Jensen Chero. Um <laughs> Because she had come up from Seattle that weekend to come see Tony and Jen and the other speakers that were there. So yes, she was there when when I got to meet her. Yeah, that was such a highlight of my whole year. I'm like so obsessed with her. I feel like every time I talk about her, I'm like, I just fangirl so hard. Sometimes I'm like, God damn it, Kelly, just shut up already. <laughs> but my love for her is just so strong. Yeah, no, it was so amazing. It was, I thought it was so funny because Tony came out or... Jen, Jen came out and you were like tearing up next to me like oh my god it's Jen and then Tony came out and then I was tearing like oh my god it's Tony yeah that was such a fun fun time totally and it was like both of our idols in one go which was really cool too yeah yeah and to get to come to Vancouver and see you it was it was so fun yeah I had such a great time and you're welcome back here anytime <laughs> oh, thank you Kelly of course okay last question if you could give one piece of advice to all of your listeners right now, what would it be? Oh, man. Follow your intuition. Do what's in your heart. Don't listen to the naysayers. They're wrong. Charge higher prices. You're worth more than whatever you're charging. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a really good one. Um, stand for what you're worth. Don't take no for an answer. Always try again. 
if there's a will, there's always a way. And as cheesy as it is, don't ever give up and never lose the faith. Because if you lose the faith, it's pretty much all gone. So yeah, I think those are the those are the biggest ones. I feel like they're also the most cliche. But I mean, cliche stuff is cliche for a reason. So yeah, those would be the biggest ones. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much, Dom. These were amazing questions. I absolutely love being in your hot seat. You ask 10 out of 10 questions. So thank you so much for being here. (laughs) No, of course. Anytime. All right, my friends. And there you have it. That is the show for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. I so appreciate you. I love you so much. And I want to let you know that you are seriously my favorite. You showing up every single week to listen to this podcast means the absolute world to me. And if you got any value from this episode, because I know you did, please take a second to screenshot this and upload it to your Instagram stories. It really does mean the world to me. It helps me get this message out to more listeners. And it also really just showcases you and what you're interested in. And everybody will think you're cool because you listen to the show. (laughs) Come on, we all like judge what people like are like based on the podcasts they listen to. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's kind of like an unspoken thing. But anyways, if peeps see you listening to the Kelly Track Show, everybody's going to think you're cool. Anywho, if you love this, share it on Instagram stories, tag me in it. I would so love to hear your biggest aha moment or your takeaway or anything that you found insightful. And I'm excited to connect with you over on Instagram. I always try my best to DM and get back to every single one of you that writes in. I always share your kind reviews If you tag the show, I will share it in my Instagram. I will give you all the shout outs. I love shout outs if you haven't noticed. (laughs) So thank you so much. I so appreciate you. Thank you for being here. And thank you so much in advance for rating, reviewing, and subscribing to the show. It's a pleasure and an honor to see you here every single week. So have an amazing day. Be sure to check out the giveaway while you're at it if you're leaving a review anyways. And I will catch you back here soon. All right, my friends. Adios. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please take a second to share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this message. And if you feel so called and so moved, please write an honest review of what you think about this podcast in iTunes and leave me some stars. That would truly help me out on my journey to helping millions and millions of people. And until next time, have a lovely day and I'm so excited to see you back here soon.